Grant. Well, I suppose we should be fair to uh, Bruges itself that uh, it does get a little bit of a kicking in this movie. I don't know whether you would uh, be able to sell Bruges to anybody right now or whether you'd be able to tell me how wonderful that city really is. Well, I mean, I think this is a little unfair. I, I stand by Bruges from the beginning to the end of this film, and nobody gives me credit for anything. Everybody says we give them a hard time. It's just the only people that people listen to are the negative people, and uh, Bruges suffers as a result. I suppose uh, one big thing... I completely right. agree, by the way. I'm going to say to that. He's right. We yeah. start. We start again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did, you, did you find yourself actually liking Bruges, young fellow? I found myself actually liking Bruges, just a little bit. Um, in retrospect, when I remember back to the fun times, strolling the streets and feeding the swans, uh, hard-boiled sweets. Um, yeah, it's like that fairy tale. But no, it was, it's a beautiful city, man. It really is. But when we got there, it was the middle of winter, you know. So it was four o'clock in the afternoon. It was dark the streets were completely bare it was a very desolate feel to the place uh, which kind of fed into the, the piece certainly for my character anyway, who's incredibly despondent the whole way through the piece really I'm guessing that uh, the great Martin McDonough was, was the major selling point for both of you here in, in getting involved and he stripped would have been another and, and obviously seeing this wonderful city but I would imagine one major thing for you Colin would be the fact that you get the karate chop the dwarf that must have been a very attractive uh, moment for you to absolutely I'm on. Been, been getting geared up for that moment my whole life Absolutely. Hard to believe it actually came through. I know, you know, people say you shouldn't wish that hard or something. If you want it that desperately, it'll never happen, but that's, you know. Even if it was only in a film. Yeah. The inspirations here, when I, when I watched it, I was thinking of, uh, it's almost like Jules and Vincent Vega, Do I Went Down. I thought there were certain reference points for both of you, whether you discussed the dynamic of what you were going to do with, the, you know, in regard to playing off each other, or whether Martin had very clear ideas, and therefore you didn't really need to go beyond the script. Uh, we didn't have to go beyond the script. We went into the, I mean, we, we spent a lot, three weeks rehearsal, so... We had a lot of time to question motivations and, you know, journeys and backstories and all sorts of things like that. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't the kind of thing where you let, okay, let's set up the gag. It was never, it never at that level. It's the humour doesn't come from that anyway. It's character driven, really, and the way people speak and all that. And you can underestimate what, you know, the fact that people, the things that people do come out with. You read the script, you think it's funny. When you got to say it, you got to make sure that you're not, not, you know, outside of yourself laughing at it. So most of it wasn't, it wasn't about setups and, and gags. Uh, it was mostly about trying to get into where these people were, and then that's just how they express themselves. You know what I mean? I don't think I, I, I've ha ever been really as familiar with a, a script, with the characters, or our world as I was with this. You know, because of the three weeks rehearsal. I mean, I've done a little bit of rehearsal before in films, but you usually don't get that much time. You know, it's seen as something of a luxury, and on this, something that's so well crafted, the script, it was definitely something of a necessity. Because for the three weeks, I mean, the more we talked about it, the more that was revealed. Literally, I thought we'd make it to about a week and a half into rehearsal, and then we'd be like, can we go and shoot it now? And, but it just kept speaking to us, you know? Something yeah, and uh, even a lot of rehearsals you do get in film is about the technicals. Mm -hmm. It's like, isn't it, you know, you'd be running through whatever the stunt is or whatever that is. But to actually get at the, the yeah, table, get at the text. Cups of tea and good chats. Fantastic. You know? I, I should mention, too, that there's, there's, there's a great uh, Ken and, and, and Ray debate. You, you like your culture and you like your fun. And, and in a way, for a, a, a person working in the movies, that, that is the kind of co career course you've got to plot between culture and fun. And I don't know if that's something that you even uh, consider in regard to your, you know, your career overall, you oh, I'll have a little bit of fun in this, I'll, I'll go and have some culture over here, or whether these things just tend to happen to you uh, in regard to... I don't think they have to be mutually exclusive either. I mean, no. I, know, I know what you mean. I know cer certain things are deemed to be you know, there for pure entertainment purpose, and they'd be called popcorn films, and some things would be seen in a more artistic light, and they would maybe provoke a more serious thought or discourse after the film. But, but I don't think they're mutually exclusive either. I think, no. like, for me, a good thing to do would be to be part of stories that you have personally, I have personally some connection with and that maybe are about something and if I got the chance to work on a knocked up the, com the comedy, that's genius, I mean that's just brilliant stuff or something a little bit more serious maybe if it's a Cassandra's dream or whatever it may be but to keep keep varying it up you know and never to just kind of paint something with a with broad brush stroke of being light or being dark you know there's, there's, there's elements of, of both those things in each other you know always there's a moment in the movie you, you kind of say of, of uh, Colin's character that the boy has uh, the boy has the capacity to change and yeah. just trying to convince your boss not to have him killed and, and I guess in a way that, that that kind of does echo a little bit into y your actual own career at the moment in that that you have sort of gone through for me I think in the last year or two a sort of a change in that you kind of stepped away from the limelight for a while and, and you're kind of I don't know what that's you sort of see it that way yourself that the kind of a, not cautious but you're kind of just stepping back into the ring almost uh, in a way would you 
I wouldn't say cautiousness at all. No, I just the bottom line is like the last three films I've done have been have been smaller pieces. Because Pride and Glory, which I did before either of the last two, um, I agreed to do while I was doing Miami Vice, and then Woody Allen's film came along, and then this came along. So there's no, there really is no carpentering of a particular path or, or career um, trajectory, you know, at all. And there never has been. I've just been really jammy. Um, but I, I, you know, as maybe you grow up and you, you get a few days under your belt ones that you remember and maybe you know your your taste changes and grows and evolves or devolves or whatever you know it's just have either of you ever ended up at a party with two Mikey hookers and a racist dwarf uh first two <laughs> well we went first out after that scene didn't we I <laughs> know <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> 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 don't say the first two but not the third <laughs> <laughs> no no possibly just can't remember <laughs> Jesus Roar. Jesus Roar. Yeah. Rock and roll. I think we're done. Thank you, man. Cheers, man. Cheers, thanks.